Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Thanks for being here. Today we're going to do a tutorial on carving up a bear in a stump. Something similar to this cute little guy. Now my bears don't always look the same, so we're going to be going for this style. Maybe not the exact facial expression. Now I'll be using my gas MS250 and my gas powered MS170 with a dime tip bar. We'll also be using a couple different die grinders, but we'll be using a cross cutter bit from Sabretooth, a flame bit from Sabretooth to uh, clean them up and detail and all that kind of stuff. We'll also be using a torch and a flap sander. So if you guys are ready, get your safety gear on, get your saws fired up, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's start making some sawdust. <laughs> Hey guys, so like I said, we're going to be carving up a cute little bear, something similar to this guy. All right, it's probably like six inches here, six to seven. Obviously, there's branches, so it's a little wider there. And we're going to be carving them out of this piece. I just had this piece of maple laying around, so that's what I'm going to use. You guys can use pine. Use use whatever you've got. Pine tends to carve the easiest, though, a soft wood. All right? You guys want to make sure you've got safety gear, chaps, uh, steel toe boots, you're wearing gloves, ear protection. Get yourself a dust mask as well. As usual, I have links down below to the same things I'm using or similar if I can find them through Amazon. You guys purchase through those links. They help support the channel. I really do appreciate it. Now, when we're getting this thing in the jaw horse, because that's what this is, a jaw horse, we got our log. This log's about 10 inches tall. So make sure your saws are sharp. Make sure your gear is ready to go. And uh, I'm gonna do my best to walk you guys through. We got a saw cam view. So uh, let's get started. All right, guys, let's get right into it. First cut's gonna be a wedge cut. We're angling to the back, but don't cut all the way through. Cut down and back and then stop short. You're gonna come from the other side and cut in to that line you just made and pull that wedge out. All right, now you need to shape that back just a little while you're there. See, I have just a line in there. We need to put it, create a little bit of space. So kind of just carve it away, trim it out. So you have some room to work later. And again, just trimming that back area. Just a minute, we're gonna go in and cut some lines for the ears. Now, these are just gonna be very basic ears. We're cutting in, but then drawing the bar out as we make our way down that cut, okay? So you see, going in, coming down, and drawing the bar out. Now I leave that, and we move on to what the rest of the edge of that stump will be. So create this line down and around. We're only going in like maybe a quarter of an inch. Right now we are just using the MS250, no dime bar. So that's gonna give me a gradual look, you know, of where the, now I have an idea how much I have to work with for the head and the arms. Now we're in go cutting down, meeting that line that we just created with the ear. And this will remove another wedge shape. And repeat the same on the other side. All right guys, after we get this side of the head cut, we'll be moving into some angle cuts for the ears. Tilt the saw to the side, whatever works for you. Cut down in, cut down in, remove that triangle or wedge shape, see? Now trim up under those ears, because they're not gonna come down like that. This way we can start to work on giving an effect that the ears are on top of the head. Make a little cut, make a little cut angle the saw to kind of trim those cuts, trim down. All right, sometimes the left hand view is a little bit better shot. You guys kind of see what I'm doing. We're sort of like rounding the top of the head. We're working on making the back between the ears lower than the front. Now we're gonna cut down to about the depth of the height of the, oh, not there, sorry, wrong part. <laughs> cut down about an inch and a half or two inches, whatever you want and angle down to that cut. So the front piece should be more narrow, like on the left. Now we wanna angle back just a very little bit and cut down the height of the bar, which is about, what, two and a half, maybe three inches tall. 
give or take, remove that piece, and that will reveal the front of the nose. Okay. And I'm just angling the top of the head to the ears, gives the ears a little more height by removing this material. And it gives the top of that head a rounded look. So it defines the ears from like the sides and the top of the head by removing material that way. Again, guys, trying to give you as much instruction as I can. And those of you that are members, this video will go through pretty much all the same stuff, but there are a few added details that, uh, that'll be there for you guys in that video. On top of a couple different faces we'll be carving and uh, different styles of fur, different styles to carve bark and, and things like that. So if you wanna become a member, check out the link below this video or at the top of my channel where it says join. You guys can see what that's all about. So we made that line a little deeper and now we're trimming away what we don't need here on the side. See how I'm kind of keeping that rounded, if you will? Just little cuts, making little cuts and you're able to uh, make round cuts with your bar. You don't want to go super deep, go fast, you just take your time. Same thing on this side, kind of getting below that ear, cutting down, rounding that line into that cut. Sometimes it takes a couple passes to get there because we're trying not to overcut, so we gotta, you know, take our time with it. But honestly, when it's all said and done, you guys will be able to carve these up in like 10 to 20 minutes eventually. Like it just, it, it's gonna depend on your style and what you decide to do. So here we are blocking out the snout. We're angling in and angling the bar just slightly. I'm gonna cut across below the snout here. Now we gotta come from the side. I do it from the back. So I touch just the side of where the cheek would be, meeting the line next to the snout. I'm working the bar in and out and you can feel it pop to the current line you already made. That way there you don't overcut. You know, take your time there, pay attention. You know, go kind of slow. As you guys can see, hitting on that thing with a hatchet, sometimes having a hatchet handy is, uh, is a good thing to have. A lot of times when it's pine, you can just give it a light tap and that piece will just pop off for you so you don't have to worry about overcutting the piece. Right now, just making a little trim cut. We got a little too much meat below the nose. I'm gonna move over to the other side coming in, just kissing the side of that cheek with the bar as we move down to remove that piece on the left side of the snout, left for us watching at least. I like to trim my cheeks. A little bit of an angle cut there. So now I need to think about where those arms and paws are gonna be, and I wanna do an angle cut up. This will be similar to that angle where the paws are wrapping down over the stump. Not really the arms, but the paws and the fingernails will wrap over the stump. Using the bar like a sanding tool, and kind of just kissing the wood, working it back and forth for that rounded shape. Now we're cutting in the definition of those arms, right? Nice down, round for the paw and where the nails are gonna be. Move over to the other side, kind of angle it, shape it, cut in that line for the arm. We'll do the same, we'll cut it down for that paw as well. All right guys, so we want this stump to look like a stump so we have a more three-dimensional look. This will start bringing your piece around a little bit better. So we need to trim it in here around the paws, not cutting the paw, but cutting to the line that's created that paw. So you cut in, trim down, and trim it out. Okay, so we kind of keep the thickness of the log down low, but up higher, we're making it thinner so it kind of meets that line. Hopefully that makes sense. You guys can see on the left there, we're sort of trimming up to those lines we've created, the lines that define and create the paw. So I'm gonna move this. I should have moved it the other way so you can see it on the left screen better, but hopefully we'll be able to see it on the cam view. All right, so we're gonna come in from one side here, I believe, and uh, 
kind of a, attack the piece by cutting up to the line. You see the two lines on the inside we've created by the paws? We need to cut two of those. So we're sort of angling in. Boom, pop, pop that piece right out. Same on the other side, we're gonna angle it in and remove that piece. So now the bear sticks out past the log. That's what we want, three-dimensional look. This is all stuff you guys can practice and hone in. I encourage you to do better, right? You guys can do better, and a lot of you will do better. These are just basics, right? I don't consider myself some professional carver, even though I love to carve and I carve often. And, and I think that's just because I, I have my standards higher. There's pieces I still want to create and goals I still have to reach before I could consider myself a professional. So you see what we did there with removing the material by the neck? Now we're using the nose of the bar just to kind of sand it again. We're just kissing it, working it back and forth nice and easy. Lots of control here, guys. You're working your arms, working that throttle, and just sort of you know, shaping the piece. I'm gonna actually kick this into high speed. Most of this is just gonna be round all your edges and work that saw around like we've been doing. All right, now we got some shaping done. We need to move in and kind of define the log from the bear. So using the nose of your bar, come in here and kind of make these lines and round them around. You're not going super deep right away. You're just taking your time and removing a little bit of material from behind and the sides of the bear. See how deep that looks on this one? We're kind of going in and just removing that material. This is really going to define the piece and give him just a good three-dimensional look. So now we're cleaning this up again using the nose of the bar. Get rid of the cut lines, get rid of any hard angles. None of that exists on a tree, they're rounded. You know, the bark might have it, but for the most part we need to start with a rounded, somewhat rounded piece. So shape those over, cuts away, and uh, take your time. All right guys, so just trimming that face, making it round so we don't have those sides sticking out, okay? again. Rounding the top of that forehead just a little bit now. All right, we're starting to think about that face and that rounded bare head look. Hey, if you guys are enjoying this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, hit subscribe. If you're learning to carve, I got all kinds of tutorials. I'm here to help you. And if you want to help contribute to this channel, you can become a member. Heck, you can purchase tools through the Amazon links. You guys can buy work from my Etsy shop. You guys can follow me on social media. And I appreciate all that kind of stuff. Now, while I was talking, I hope you guys were still paying attention. As you see, we kind of rounded that snout with the edge of the bar and sort of just brought that nose in to define where the eyes will be. Right here, just making some angle cuts for the nose. And we'll trim that up, right, using the bar again. A lot of work can be done just with the bar. Now, the bar on my MS-250 is the same bar you'll find on your MS-170 and your MS-180. Okay, it's running 43 gauge chain, and it is. I took that bar and sprocket and chain off of my 170 when I upgraded it to a dime tip bar, and I put it on my 250. Here I am making a relief cut in the back, which this piece really doesn't need it because it's already super dry, but doing it so you guys can see. Also, make sure your piece sticks out past the jaw horse. Don't have it all the way in. That's what I'm pointing at, because you could hit that metal piece if you're not paying attention. Here we go. Here's an extra cut under the neck, just using the bar of the dime tip bar actually now to just kind of clean that up, reach in there and round it out. You don't want straight cuts under those necks. All right, guys, an overcut. We need to go ahead and round the piece, make it look good. The better it looks, the more detail it looks, sometimes a little more money you can get. Now right here, this isn't a straight cut. We're using the angle. We're angling the saw using the side of the chain to kind of cut in that mouth. Sort of just has a rough look there. But it's okay, we'll clean it up with some power tools. 
if you want, you can do a couple little angles or something there, you know. But make sure you trim that lower piece of the mouth. It should not stick out the same or farther than the upper lips. They should be tucked in just a little bit. While you're there, shape as you go. Do what you need to do. You know, trim the neck, trim the face, trim that head a little. It's kind of what it's all about. It's not just like trying to copycat my piece, okay? Make the piece your own. When things need work, do the work. So right here we're adding fur. These are not straight cuts. If you look on the left hand side, my saw is angled. Even here on the right, the saw is at an angle. We're using the side of those teeth to create a fur pattern. This is a very simple, very basic fur pattern with your saw. Okay, this is like where you start. It's easy peasy. Now say you don't have the dime tip bar and all you have is, you know, a die grinder and tools. You could use that too. Go in and just, you know, make it, play around with it. Um, a design though with the bar and with the die grinder and tools is what I'm going to talk about on the members page. We're going to kind of go over that touch base and go over some different ideas and I'll also show you. All right, putting fur on the chest. We did the other arm. We'll have to do this arm here in just a minute, but we'll kick it in high speed. Alright guys, so our fur pattern is all done. We're going to go in, turn the saw sideways, use the nose of that dime tip bar and sort of just cut in an eyebrow. Kind of like where the lower portion of the eyebrow, right above the eyeball, is going to be. Hopefully you guys are able to see how that's going to be done. Turning my bear because I believe, yeah, we're going to go in here and put in the nails. Using the side of the bar, not straight cuts, the side of the teeth, you can make three or four lines. Three lines will give you four fingers, four lines will give you five fingers. Honestly, it's about how technical you want to get. If you come in and go back the other way on those lines, they start to come to a point and look more like a fingernail. Trim off any out overcuts, go to the other side and repeat. All right, if you guys are carving and your piece is beginning to look like this so far, right, or to the nails, you know, you probably have a cute little piece going so far. Hey, making those back cuts though, still making them uh, nice pointy fingernails. All right, rounding it a little bit. Again, things to play with, make the piece your own, you know, do your best to make these cuts, but also come up with your own style in the future. It's a good idea so people can tell your work apart from other work. Now I'm gonna move the uh, carving out a little bit further on the jaw horse. We're gonna work on a quick bark design. Using the side of the teeth again, but going a little deeper, much deeper than fur, we will do a very spaced out pattern. See how we're spacing these lines? We'll do that pattern all the way around the log. All right, guys, and that'll give you a really quick, easy look on bark. Now members, we're going to go ahead and we will do this one in two other designs for the bark. And uh, yeah, we'll use some different tools as well to achieve that look for you guys. Alright guys, so now we're moving into the die grinder. We're going to be using this saber tooth quarter inch shaft, half inch coarse, the green burr. And uh, we're going to go ahead, detail the nails get into the ears, round the ears, clean up the snout, make it pretty smooth, detail the snout, detail the mouth, and kind of cut in like 
in where we're going to want the eye. And then we're going to go ahead and use cross cutter bit to actually carve the eye in. While we have this in here, we're also going to just clean up around, you know, the, the tree stump wherever it needs. All right, guys, so getting in using that quarter inch shaft, half inch, coarse green saber tooth flame bit burr right here, cleaning up around these ears. Super versatile burr. Um, you, honestly, if you guys have been watching and following for a while, you know this is my favorite. I use it on all my projects, just about everything small and large. It's just very, very versatile. It really, really is. So you can use this for shaping. Really enjoy that coarse bit though because it doesn't remove too much material too fast. The extra coarse can cut super quick. If you're ready for that kind of stuff, then go for it. Um, for me, I just like to remove a little bit at a time. As you can see, we're putting some arches in the ears here. Keep it moving, you get the death wobble. Do what you guys gotta do here to just shape it up, clean it up, make it look nice, like a finished piece. You know, don't leave hard edges, don't leave straight edges. There's nothing straight or angled on a bear. Everything is smooth and round and or coarse like the fur, you know what I mean? But there's no real um, angles. Like the ears there, the cut looks very sharp, you know? You gotta go in and round that and soften those edges. That's what I'm looking for, soften the edges. So, touching in here on the eyebrows, just sort of cleaning up. Cutting in, getting a little more of an angle out of the wood there. Doing a rough eye with this bit, which is totally possible. So like if you don't have a cross cutter bit, here you go. You know, you're done with your eyes. Just go in with this, practice, carve an eye out. Right, and that could be it for your piece. I mean, you could be just about done with that. Every bit and every little detail just adds to the piece though. You know, so if you keep taking it a step further and a step further and a step further, one, you're adding to the piece, two, you're practicing on skills, right? Three, sometimes you can command a higher dollar. Sometimes it's a lot more, sometimes it's not much more. You know, price is a whole thing that is, is very hard to get into with everybody that's in all different parts of the world and the country. It's just, it's really, really hard to uh, discuss because I could say, hey, $80, $100 for this piece, someone else might only get 50, someone else might be getting 200. It just, it just depends on where you live. All right, guys, so we're working on the nose here, just rounding it. We're going to use the end of this burr to kind of cut in that nostril area here in just a minute as you can see just defining it see that pop it in there boom pop it in boom clean it up just a little nose done take the same burr go around hit that mouth a little up cut a little back down a little around mouth just about complete done okay anywhere it needs to be cleaned up clean it up it's on you guys to clean up your piece make it look nice all right guys, using that flame bit, come in here where the nails are, kind of just cut in, right? You can just cut in if you want to define them nails a little bit different. You guys can take as much or as little time as you want here, defining nails, making them look real, just making them a little more distinctive. Or you can just skip this part and leave those chainsaw lines. Whatever the heck works for you, it's your piece, right? Make it your own, give it your style. All right, guys, so this bear is pretty much done. Now it's time to hit him with the torch, kind of sand him up really quick, and, uh, you know, he'll be ready for some finish and for sale. So let's hit it with the torch quick and uh, finish him up here. All right, guys, so now this is on you to make the bear as dark as you want if he's just going to be torched. If you're going to use paint, then you don't have to blacken the entire piece, right? We just want to burn the fuzz off that's created from carving. So it's kind of like, what design are you going to go with? If you're going to burn the whole thing, then burn the bear really dark so we can sand it back. If you're going to go with paint, hit it lightly and then, you know, change it from there. All right, guys, we forgot to use the cross cutter. There it is. I bit cross cutter bit from Sabretooth. 
gonna plunge cut it in there for some eyeballs. Hey, right now, till the end of March, use code capital H-A-L-L-10 at sabertooth.com and get a discount on your next order. That code's good to the end of March, 2021. All right, so cutting these eyes in. Ooh, get ready for it. Nice little smoky shot. Boom, cute. Look at that guy. People are gonna love it. Moving right into the Sandoflex flap sander here. The extension I have is something I made, but I'm gonna get a hold of a buddy of mine that metal, does metal fab and see if we can make, make something a little bit better. If so, I will share it with you guys. Remember, a high-speed drill works best for this. There he is, a quick little bear in a stump, all right? He's got his cute little face on there. Cut right in, we got the paws coming over, all right? Now hopefully this tutorial has helped you get a bear looking pretty close to this. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really hope that it's helped you um, create a bear and a stump like this. Now for my members, those of you that are members and those of you that might become a member, we're gonna go ahead and take this bear. We're gonna do just some extra little detail things on top of this video. And then I'm also gonna have a couple other bears carved up and what we're gonna do is work on giving them a little bit different facial expression, a different way to carve the bark and a different way to carve the fur. So that's gonna be for members only. If you guys wanna become a member, you can find the link down below this video and you can find it on the main page of my YouTube channel as well. It says membership or it says join on the cover page. So you guys can go there, check it out. These videos will be under the tutorial section for members. And uh, again, I really do appreciate those of you that contribute. Now, I don't want you guys to uh, be discouraged. If you can't become a member, it's fine. It's for those that really want to, uh, want to and can. I understand not everybody can, and that's why I'm making tutorials that everybody can enjoy. And then, uh, you know, for the members, I gotta give them just a little bit extra. They're giving a little bit extra to the channel, so I gotta give a little extra back. Now, I do want to uh, encourage everyone that we will have a couple more bear carvings. Not this design, but the plan is to do, here, let me grab them for you guys, don't go anywhere. Hoping to do a tutorial on carving a cute little bear like this. And a cute bear like this, who will eventually have a fishing pole with a fish. And hopefully, just a cute free standing little bear like this guy. Now again, if everything works out, there'll be three more videos where I'll be carving about the same size. And the same as this video, members will get extra added features. Those videos end up being longer with more detail and uh, yeah, hopefully more help. So we'll also talk price point and uh, ways to sell and communicate with your customers through those videos. Anyway, this video has been long enough. Hope it's helped you guys who are learning to carve. Remember, stay safe, all right, guys? Your safety's in your hands. Keep your saws sharp. Keep your safety gear on. And uh, have fun with it. I'll see you guys in the next video.